Hello, welcome to Jane's Food Workshop. I'm Chin and this is my mum Chu. Yes, it's Chu here. Showing you how to cook. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, and if you're new to the channel, we teach you how to do Chinese takeaway food at home as well as some Chinese traditional food and Malaysian street food. We have owned many takeaways in the past, three generations of takeaway owners, four of street food chefs. We own restaurants and takeaways and even a fish and chip shop, so we know what we're doing. Also, we chef in them. We're not just people ordering people about, I'm head chef in one and mum's head chef in the other. So we do know what we're talking about. Today, we are doing what, Mum? Wonton. Wontons. Deep fried crispy wontons. Now, there are two variations of these. There are ones that will use a dedicated pancake skin, which is not a pancake skin, a dedicated wonton deep fried skin, which is small blocks like that. Some places will use those. A lot of places will just use the pastry we're going to use today. In fact, most places will use the pastry that we're going to show you today. Only probably really high end takeaways and restaurants will use the dedicated pasta sheets. Yes. I bent my nail back. Oh! Oh! That made me feel gross. Anyway, so we'll get on with the recipe. Yeah? Sure, Unless, definitely. Yeah? Sure, yeah. Oh, forgot to say, we sell a lot of the ingredients, so the dry stuff, on our web store, which is chinandchew.com, as well as we've got a cookbook out. The first edition, which is this, has in fact sold out. But you can pre-order the second edition, which is coming soon. Should have been here in April, but due to the worldwide health crisis, everything got held back by about two months. So we do apologize for that. It's on its way, should be here within 20, 30 days. And these are, the second edition is selling out quite quick as well. So if you do want to make sure you get a copy, go pre-order it now at chinandchew.com. Also, if you want to see what our daily lives are like, head over to my daily vlog channel. That's chinvlog.com, where you literally just see us living. Bearing in mind, my language is very raw. raw. <laughs> I swear a lot, but that's just our real life. There's no hold bars there. And I rant about things that I feel need ranting about. So, yeah. Sure. Well, now we'll get on with the cooking. Okay, so we have the main thing that you're gonna need. These are 10 inch um, home spring. TYJ spring roll pastries. These are pretty much industry standard. This is what your local takeaway will be using. They do in different sizes, but we're gonna do the small ones today, so we're gonna cut these into the sizes we need. You've got then one chicken breast. We're gonna do roughly 20 today. Hopefully we can get 20 out of this. It will change depending on the size of the prawns, and of course the size of your chicken breast. You'll get between 15 and 20. Two and a half liters of vegetable oil to deep fry them in. We have 100 millilitres of water to make a paste with about 30 grams of flour there. We've also got more water here to add to the mix to bring it together. There's um, three dessert spoons there. Half a slice of blended white bread. Five large sized king prawns. 17 grams of ginger. Quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Quarter teaspoon of black pepper powder, ground black pepper, sorry. We got a third teaspoon of MSG and a third teaspoon of salt. Now remember, this is takeaway cooking. If me and mum were gonna do these ourselves for home cooking or in our restaurants, like our fine dining restaurants, I should say, we would put a lot, a lot, a lot more into it. This is just takeaway cooking and it's fast food. So it's basic but it tastes good. Yeah. So we'll get on with what we need to do now. Right, so we are now gonna cut the chicken and the king prawns as finely as we can using the chopping board. You can use a food processor for this, but you get a much better texture if you use your hands, don't you? Yes. Well, you use a knife, that's using your hands. I prefer, I prefer hand cut rather than in the processor. Yeah. Processor means a bit more like paste, isn't it? Yeah. But if you, that's how you want it. Yeah, you can do it whatever you like. Yeah, so but we, we're showing you a hand cut. Yeah. Hand cut version. I'm going to do it fast, all right? Yeah. 
Shall I do it first or yeah, do you? you always want to cut this way. Quite fine, yeah? With the chicken. You're always going um, across the grain like any meat. It's quite thin. You can see how thin it is? Yeah. And then you turn it round. Cut this side, yeah? If you think those lumps are a bit too big, you can just pass over yeah. it and cook in, cut in again. But that should be fine by the time the chicken breast cook quickly, anyhow. After you cut it, you put that into the uh, bowl. bowl. It's not a basin, is it? Uh, you do that for the whole chicken breast, and then you do exactly the same thing for the prawns. So now for the king prawns, yeah. So you just get the king prawns and you want to mush them up like normal. So cut them in half. Yeah. Like cut it so half. Cut it in half. Just keep slicing. Roughly will do. Yeah. And no rush here. No. Just, just take it easy and just let your knife run. But not run into your hand then, okay? Yeah. So when your meat has all been minced like that, you're going to add all the dry ingredients and put them into the, to the big bowl into the and big mix. mix. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Mum. Yeah, let's go. All means you can use your hands. Ginger? Yep. Ginger? Sugar? No, salt. Yeah. Oh, salt. MSG? Pepper? Try to sprinkle, not just plonk it into one like I did, alright? Especially when you're doing this, because yeah. you can end up with like chunks of seasoning. Yeah. And just sprinkle around it and do that. This is a garlic powder. Remember, you've left the 50 ml of water and the flour, because that's what the paste is for. That doesn't go into the mix. You also need to add your three dessert spoons of water. Give it a good mix. It's looking good. Looking good, yeah. And go all the water and give it another good mix. It smells really nice. Yes. You can see the ginger. Oh, of course. It's it smells wonderful. Okay, when it's all mixed, now you want to start preparing your spring rolls. Your pastry, sorry, not spring rolls. The spring roll pastry, which is what we're using for this. Yeah, it's too early in the afternoon, that's why. Yeah. So for this next step, you're going to have to make your paste. What we do is put a little well inside of the flour and add your water until you've got paste. Yeah, just do it a bit at a time. No rush. You can't have it too thick. This is too thick, all right? When it's too thick, it just not sticking it become a clump yeah you're basically just making a, a pastry glue yeah that's simple right that's a word pastry glue you don't want it too thin either otherwise you just it wouldn't dab stick. your water on yeah there. that's about a good consistency yeah. just a touch more sort of like a good porridge yeah that's a word to describe it it is a way to describe it yes yeah that's about right yeah the spoon should like throw through it but it should yeah. still look Clumpy, if that makes it not clumpy, like um, I can't explain it. Don't worry about those clumps that you cannot uh, it's staying there because it like it so much, it's just staying okay. <laughs> don't worry about it, we don't, so you don't worry. And then you're gonna need to get a damp cloth. We've got this one here, and a damp cloth is chilly for the pastry so you don't it doesn't dry out. You can either get knife or scissors. We're using scissors today, today. quick and easy. Scissors, this is it. Sometimes you do get this of your pastry. Just don't worry if you can use it or if you don't want to use it, you can just take it off. Yeah, the top layer is sometimes not very good. Is it? Yeah, because of the well, transportation or what, whatever reason. Or if you want, you can turn it the other way to get a better surface. There are actually two sides to these pancake roll skins as well. One side's smooth and the other side, but that side. Yeah. That side's smooth and the other side's slightly bubbly, but you have to look really closely. It's, the camera's not going to pick it up. 
because if you don't know what you're looking for, both sides look bubbly. Yeah. But this is, I, I can't explain it. This looks like it could be, if you're far away, like sugar. Mm. Whereas this is obviously a flat. It's yeah. got pits in. This has got bubbles and that's got pits. It doesn't matter if you got it wrong by making this one tan. Yeah, but, but I mean... It's only the pancake more. Yeah. Yeah. Eight, nine, ten, maybe it's ten. I'm not sure. I'm probably miscount. Don't need ten sheets because we're only doing... Yeah, to cut into this you need to two, isn't it? Yeah. When you, you when you, I would split it into half to cut it. If you try to cut one big, one big, uh, what do you call it, layer, it, it doesn't cut a fine line. But then with this, this what we're doing, it doesn't really matter. Really matter much. You just fold it into half, right? Just cut in the center. Follow the folded line. And you do this this one the same again, fold it into half and cut it. These are gonna be fairly big wontons. Yeah, lots of crispy. If obviously the smaller sheet you have, you'll you make, make smaller. smaller. But if you like a lot more filling, you can put more. If you like a bit less, you can put less. So you have the more of the crispy. But I, a lot of people prefer the crispy one. Yeah, we always make them big. Yeah. So they were extra like, um, Pastry. Piss out, yes, yummy. Again, this is takeaway cooking, it's not traditional food at all. I'd say 90% of a Chinese takeaway menu is westernized. Put that to one side. When you finish this, all you have to do is cover them with the sheet. Yeah, you just uh, split it up so it's make it easier to do. And then you cover it into the, put the damp cloth over it, stop it getting dry, especially like weather, like, like this, now. outside. And you get the breeze, and the breeze just is already start drying the edge. It's all split out. Separated. Yes. Yeah. That's a word for it. And you put it in here. You did use a dessert spoon to mix because the teaspoon is too small to mix. But when you come to do the filling, you get a better to, portion size of a teaspoon. Yeah. Portion control. It's a big thing. Yes. Okay. So we're just using this chopping board to put the made wontons on. You put one skin, you get one, and then you put the other one here. If you not have that, some of this paste, you just put a tiny bit on it, just stop it. Stop it from falling away from each other. Yeah? Yep. And then you take your one spoonful of it. You want to make it like a star shape. Yeah. With the pastries. If you want more, you can put more. I think that's about the right amount. Yeah, it is. You fold it round. Oops. As you see, it become a really big. Yeah. Do the that's same what one. Lots of people like. Plus, people feel that they're getting good value for money when you you get a nice big one ton like that, and it literally costs you only a couple of pence more. You just keep doing this process until all your are filled. I'm going to go pop the oil on now so it's nice and hot when we go to, what's the word? Cook. Five. And also, just in case you guys didn't get a good picture of it before, these are the rolls. We made about 22 out of that. Well, we thought we'd get about 20, but 22 is pretty good going. And they're not small size. It's not a small size filling either, so that's fantastic. The oil is now up to about 170. You want it between 170, 180. The good thing about this pastry though is that you can overcook it and it doesn't like to burn. So even if your oil is a bit too hot, you don't have to worry too much. Look at that. We'll just cook like... Just cook. About three at a time, something like that. If you have a bigger frying pan, you can, deep frying pan, you can put more, yeah? Yeah. But this is a small one. You just go by the size of the pa frying pan you use. Yeah. Deep frying pan. Right. In we go, yeah? If it, when you do it, it gets spreads out like that. Don't worry. And when you put it in, just go and give it a bit of squeeze. So. 
If you're cooking them from frozen, you don't normally have to worry about squeezing them. No, that's only because when it's uh, in the room temperature, it's spread out like these. Or you can just put it in like that if you like. But I thought it's nice to give it a, not too hard, it might become like that, okay? Again, that's why you <laughs> use two pastries. Yeah. Because these are quite delicate. Five then, yeah? That's about right. Have you got one of this spiral? Spider. Spider. Spiral. You can see it's turning that colour golden brown now. Golden brown! Da 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 da! Is that by the animals? No, they've said it before. Strang was it stranglers? Was it the strangler? No, that's. Golden brown! You will tell us. In Go on. They've, all, they've told us before because you've sung that song about four times. Oh, wow. And I still can't remember who they say it is. So you want to deep fry these for about? About five minutes minimum. So you don't want it too high heat, yeah? So you want it that crispy, br crispy colour and then you want your meat to cook as well. They look amazing, they're really big as well. Right, so for some reason I didn't press record. We've just tried them and they're amazing. Yes. Impressive. Just go and impress yourself. Mm. Um, there's a hint of ginger in there. Not too much. The double sheeting makes the outside really crispy. It's incredible. Some people have it with solid cream, you know? Do they? Yeah. We have it with, um, we've got sweet chilli here. Do. Or sometimes I'll just put dark soy, I love dark soy. And just whack it in there like that. That also helps it cool it down faster so I can eat it quicker. It's lovely. Mm. Texture is nice. Mm. Not dry. Normally the chicken breast is quite dry, but the, the bread crumb help to keep it moist yeah they are really good anyway thank you very much for watching this recipe is in fact in my cookbook this is only available for sale at chillandchew.com it's never been available anywhere else i know people say they're looking on amazon and they, it's on there but they've never sold it for us you only can buy it through directly through us so that's about it for today yes thanks for watching make sure you like comment subscribe Hit the notification button so you don't miss any of our videos. And, well, yeah. Happy cooking, happy eating. There we go. Cheers, guys. <laughs>